What's up? I'm Albert Lawrence, and this is the IMDb Show. Today, our guest is Kelvin Harrison Jr. Welcome, Kelvin. <laughs> so, look, Kelvin, let's talk. Your new movie, Waves, is a very intimate family piece, but there's so much anxiety in it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I could not sit still during it. What do you think it is about Waves that is such an edge of your seat experience? Um, I think Trey Shells is an incredible filmmaker and he really knows how to infuse just the anxieties that we kind of go through every day and just our psyche and how it works and what young people feel like, which is just a lot of chaos, oh, you know? Yes, yes. 2019 is an interesting moment and to kind of grow in this social media world and, and, and you know, just the basic basic elements of family dynamics, he, he really just puts a lot of heart into it. And so the shots and the cinematography and the music and mm -hmm. just, you know, the Trent Reznor score, it's just, it's an it's all intense. It's all intense. So that's what I think makes it makes it the way it is. That score, yeah. like it makes the hairs on your arm stand up. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's what you're saying. So writer director Trey Edward Schultz, I heard that he actually wrote your character with you in mind. So talk to me a little bit about like what's going on within that character, and then how did it feel to know that something was made with you in mind. It's, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> we worked together on a movie called It Comes at Night, and it was like my first lead in a movie, so I was so grateful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we built a beautiful relationship kind of after the movie. It was like we started to impress, and I started getting mm -hmm. to know him more. And like a year later, he was like, well, I want to... I'm making my next feature. It's my version of a high school movie. I was like, okay, cool. Am I still young enough to be in a high school movie? And he was like, there are two parts. There's the brother in the first half, and there's the boyfriend in the second half. Which part do you want to play? And I was like, well, what's the more challenging part? And he was like, there's a wrestler. He said, I know you can't play sports, so that will be the most challenging part for you. And I was like, all right, word. Well, then I want that part then. And so from there, we just started collaborating and we started seeing these through lines between you know, his upbringing um, in Texas and being a young man and my upbringing being from New Orleans and understanding our romantic relationships and our relationships with our father. So mm -hmm. it was like these parallels and these just universal truths that just rang so so big and so you know to, to get that character it was like it felt i felt like i was seen and, and you know in my family growing up in a middle class home and also i felt like um i felt like so many other people like boys were just gonna find themselves in this and mm -hmm. and just feel like you know masculinity is is so much more fluid than we like to make it and also vulnerability is can be encouraged and empowered mm -hmm. so um yeah those are all the things that made me happy those are a lot of things that made you happy <laughs> was there anything that scared you at all about the part uh yeah you know you never want to get a part like this and just and play into like the cliches or the stereotypes of what that could be for a young black man mm -hmm. so um we were very you know cognizant of that and we were we wanted to treat it with a sensitivity um that it deserved so that that makes me nervous, but at the same mm. time, it's like we don't get op we don't get parts like this at the same time. So I was just really grateful that Trey believed in me as an actor and put that in the forefront, and um and, and allowed that to not become a thing about race because it could he just you know he made a movie that was very personal to him. He could have mm -hmm. cast someone that looked like him, right. and so yeah. Well, the family at the core of of the film is an African American family though, yes. right? And so while watching the conversations that were happening, they felt very familiar to me, very specific. Um, so much so that I was actually surprised when I found out that Trey is white. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so give me some insight. How did he know that this is what we talk about? <laughs> we had a lot of talks. <laughs> Trey wrote his version of the script and it was, and it was, it was it, it, all those, those truths are there. Mm. The family dynamics are there. And I think that's what's so beautiful about it is that everybody's a human being and we're all going through the same things. The specificity and the nuance of like historically what kind of comes into place for you know African Americans, mm. that's when we start to have that conversation and be like, okay, this is what my dad actually sounded like, and this is what the things they might say, and this is what my sisters might do, and also, you know, if we say that curse word one more time, I think somebody would have been smacked. So it's just, the, you know, it's just the, the different, just in different homes and trying to find that balance, but also like this is a very progressive black family, mm -hmm. and you know, they're really trying to do their best to incorporate everything that's happening and just just move forward and not necessarily dwell on you know what the generation had to stick with prior to. Mm -hmm. There's some things that still bleed through, but you know, they're trying their best. You know, they're trying their best. 100%, because this is a portrayal of a black family that we don't get a chance to see on mm -hmm. screen often yeah. at all, actually. Um, so <laughs> there's a moment where your father, who is played by Sterling K. Brown, shout out to Sterling. Sterling K. Brown, SKB. SKB, where he says something to your character along the lines of, you know, as black people, we're not afforded the privilege to be average. Mm -hmm. That struck me. Mm -hmm. What did that line mean to you? 
Um, you know, Trey and I talked about that moment a lot because, you know, it was something my dad had told me. Mm-hmm. You know, Trey, you know, it was so interesting because it's like he had a version of that that he heard from his father as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the, you know, obviously the specificity of being a black family, it, it kind of changes. And uh, it, it, it's interesting because I think ultimately it's, it's coming from a place of, of, of love mm-hmm. and maybe too much love. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's, it's also parenting out of fear a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because you know we've seen so many injustices happen in the world and in, in, in America, and there's been so many things that they weren't, didn't have the privilege to kind of have as well growing up. Mm-hmm. So as you're trying to, to raise your child, you want the best for them, and you need to let them know, and, 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 and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, give them the, the knowledge yes, to, yeah. to kind of see what's kind of what's up ahead. But at the same time, we have to allow them to be an individual. So it, it rings true, but it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting conversation to, to have between a parent and a child, and then a, a black man and his black son. So yeah, that's like you said, very interesting to see that happen between a, a black man and, and a son. And then so for you to have the insight to be able to absorb that as a son character, but you also, also as a man, just understanding mm-hmm. the weight of this. Yeah. 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 Um, so look, your role, Tyler, there's so much nuance in this role. We get to see you portray a dynamic range of emotions um, within this. Talk to me some about the collaboration that you and Trey had when really making Tyler come to life, breathing some true essence into him. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> first starts with the blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, uh, we were in a Target, and we were looking at, we were trying to pick up some um, some games, because we like to play cards, okay. and uh, he, he was like, Mr. Dot, that's what he calls me, he calls me Mr. Okay. Dot, because he started off with K-Dot, which is like Kendrick Lamar, sure. but then he wanted to, he was like, well, now that you're a, a, a young adult, you are Mr. Dot, and so he's like, Mr. Dot, uh, what are you thinking for hair? And I was like, well, I don't know. I've had fake dreads before. That didn't. That wasn't good. Um, you know, I've had a high top. That wasn't good. Um, he was like, well, what do you think about dying? And I was like, can I dye it pink? He was like, hell no. Oh. <laughs> and so I, he. And so I was like, he was like blonde. And I was like, that would be cool. So because we were thinking about what athletes are like, and also the idea of an athlete that's kind of pushing boundaries. Like mm. what, what what really kind of gets into what kids are today. And like I thought about Odell Beckham, you know, with sure. the thing, and everyone talked about it. Everyone was like, I can't believe he's doing that. And like, can he cut it off his head? And but I thought it was such a. It became a great statement piece for him. And also he's constantly pushed boundaries in terms of and and the idea of what like a black man should look like and. Yeah what they should dress like. Mm-hmm. And I think those are, these are the idols that young kids are looking at too. Frank Ocean, Kanye, you know, um, Pharrell and the new masculinity cover on GQ. I think, you know, this is what they're taking in and, and, and they're trying to find identity. They're trying to find expression and they're trying to find a space to just become who they want to be. Mm-hmm. So that was really important. And that kind of kind of gave us all the insight into all the other pieces of who Tyler is. He's just a kid who's just trying to figure out how to how to how to how to be happy and be who he is every day. That's amazing. Yeah. And when you mention these other guys, like yeah, we're at a moment now where we're no longer looking at cultures as just being monochromatic. Everybody doesn't have to exactly. be the exact same. With exactly. It. Excellent. So your character also in the movie itself really seems to enjoy a lot of culture. Like a lot of hip hop culture is in there. Kendrick Lamar music, Kanye yeah. West is being yeah. played in there. There's so much urban culture that it's teeming with. Uh-huh. Uh, how much of that was a part of your contribution, right? So when you were Trey, we're talking about the movie. Did you get a chance to inject any of your musical influences into there? No. Honestly, really? he had... So the script is so cool because um, it starts off and it, it, it's written waves in his Trey's handwriting oh. with a little drawing of a wave. It wasn't a great drawing of a wave. He's not an artist. He is a filmmaker. Uh, <laughs> and, it, you know, it, 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 the, the music is all in the script. So you can oh. press play and you'll hear the songs. Flora Dada starts off in the beginning, you know, and, and all the different Kanye and, and, and Frank songs, and you can read it in this big fonts and it's blow, it blue and green, and it's it's big letters and the font colors change and the sizes change. So it's really immersive. So like the whole soundtrack was was in the script. <laughs> so all we had to do was just kind of like go and get into you know the characters' mindsets and understand tonally the kind of movie Trey was trying to make. So honestly, I didn't start listening to Kanye or any of those guys until after the movie. I, I was listening, wow. on set I was listening to Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> Different, but okay. she works for me. I was gonna say, okay, I have to dig into that a little bit. So Kelly Clarkson, what era Kelly? Like since you've been gone, uh, Breakaway? Since you've been gone, since yes. you've been gone. Yes. <laughs> 
But I was listening to a lot of like, I, I love this song piece by piece that she did. I remember seeing her perform it live on American Idol because I watch a lot of American Idol. And, um, and it, it just broke my heart and I thought it rang so true for, you know, some, some of the things that kind of, kind of um, resonate with Tyler. And um, mm. yeah, it, I, just, I just think her voice is so it resonant and it just has such a, a personality and so much heart. And I, I, I don't know, I, I feel it, I feel it. Ooh, man, I'm getting choked up here. Because <laughs> I listened to Breakaway on my way to yeah, get back. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah that's good. Oh, this it. is good, good insight here. Um, okay, so, so your cast, your family is absolutely incredible. I mean, look, we've got Sterling K. Brown, Renee Elise Goldberg, and Taylor Russell. Taylor Russell. Taylor man. Russell. Let, let's Can we give a one for Taylor Russell? Clapping for Taylor Russell. Come on. Woo, so much weight that they've all got to carry in the film. So what was that family unit like on set? It's just it's so beautiful because we like once again I keep saying this but we don't get the opportunity to do make movies like this and mm. so to see SKB come in I have to keep I have to call him that <laughs> to see SKB come in you know it, with so much charisma so much you know understanding and knowledge of this business mm. and also such a, um, a a control over his instrument and his craft mm. is so exciting it, it sets the bar here so everyone knows what we're getting into everyone knows what we're doing everyone's focused and everyone's pouring their hearts into it and then have Renee come in and she had such a beautiful element. Our first family dinner was, we were all cast. Um, st we went to this place called La Tub in Florida, okay. um, which is in the movie actually. Um, Taylor and Lucas go there and um, Sterling and I were sitting there, we were talking, you know, getting ready, like, what are, we, what are you nervous about? You know, what's this gonna be like? Yeah. What are you thinking? How's Tay? You know, Taylor came in a little bit afterwards, Renee pulled up and Renee was cast last. And so it was just like, immediately we were making jokes. You know, Sterling's son, uh, um, Hamilton, to, to Renee, her song that she sings in the, in, the, in the Broadway show. I have a video of it, it is so beautiful and cute. And then Renee's like staring at him, like looking into his eyes. And I was like, this, these are my parents, obviously. And I was like, and Taylor's over there like looking at me like, oh my God, I'm like, you're annoying. You know? <laughs> you know, so it's just like you could immediately fall in and we just had such a good time and there was so much love and just, Oh, it, was, it, was, it was the best summer of my life. It was the best summer of my life. Well, and it's captured on film for all of yes. us to enjoy now, too. So, okay, look, you had a grand, fantastic summer, but 2019 period has just been an amazing year for you. I mean, this year alone, you added six credits to your IMDb page. Nice. Props, props, and props Come for on. that. Come um, on, agents. <laughs> Come through agents, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with one of those roles, uh, you're playing Teddy Green in Godfather of Harlem. Yeah. You have to tell me, what's it like to work with Forrest Whitaker? Um, I only had a, a few moments with him, uh -huh. um, but he's so nice. Honestly, I know I heard he fought for me for this part, and so I was so grateful for him. Um, but I play a musician in the um, in the in the show, so I mean, not Sterling Forrest would come two different icons. <laughs> um, so, I mean, so I keep saying Sterling because <laughs> you've got so many. You know? <laughs> um, Forrest would come to the studio and he would work with me and he would listen to me in the, in, uh, when I was recording the songs and he would give notes and it was so cool because I, I, I started seeing how music, it still kind of relates to performance and acting mm -hmm. and he would break down like the the, the, the the lyrics and he was like, you know, what what are you trying to overcome in this scene and what are you trying to say through your music and we, we would go through it like it was, it was a master class on um, acting for song and I was like, who knew, who knew, he, he and then he could sing. What? I didn't know Forrest Whitaker could sing. He wouldn't say it, but I, I said it here first. He could sing. You're spilling all the tea here today, <laughs> loving this. <laughs> Just dropping it. Just <laughs> Overflowing. <laughs> and so you're also in the upcoming Aaron Sorkin film, The Trial of the Chicago 7. So that's also got a star-studded cast as yeah. well, too. What exactly was it, though, about this particular project that made you say, okay, I, I want to join in with this team? Um, everything. <laughs> Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I really wanted. I play Fred Hampton, who is um, took over the black part, the Chicago chapter of the Black Panther Party at seventeen, mm. and um, I was when I first moved to LA. I got this incredible script uh, that Anton Fuqua was going to direct Ooh. about that about about his story, and I was just so. I started learning about him and reading about him and I was just so obsessed with who this young man was. And so when this part came around, I was like, I have to be in this movie. And then I was like, it's Aaron Sorkin's movie. So the script the script is, is probably one of the best scripts I've written in a long time. I, I, I couldn't put it down. It is so 
good and he's so so generous and so so smart and and then you add Eddie Redmayne and you add Mark Rylance and you add Sasha Baron Cohen and you add you know Michael Keaton you know I start to work tomorrow I am terrified <laughs> just let when you if you see this you know that if I if I seem okay tomorrow I am not <laughs> it's a big scene with everybody in it and I'm just kind of like and I'm just like oh my god wow. so we'll see what happens you know but it's that's that's that that's 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 a beautiful thing that's a gift wow I mean, my arms weren't big enough to catch all the names you were dropping right I there. I know, I just but dropped. <laughs> 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 yeah, Scoop, kick that out. Eddie over here, Mark. Okay. I was well, like, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, music. Music, clearly, it runs through your blood. Like, you're passionate about it. We get a chance to see you play in Waves. Uh, tell me a little bit about your musical background and, and how you were able to sort of infuse Waves with that. Yeah, um, my parents are professional musicians. My my dad is a classically trained saxophonist, and he ended up you know getting into jazz. And my mom's a jazz vocalist, and so music was a huge part of my family. My uncles play. My everyone in the family. I mean, I grew up in New Orleans, so everybody have an instrument at some point or another. <laughs> and so I started playing jazz piano and trumpet, and uh, it was a huge part of my upbringing. I played in the church. Um, I played in the, my dad's band. I played in the jazz bands. I, I did all of it. I went to jazz. Camp. Camps. Oh wow! Three jazz camps every summer. I don't miss it. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I really love it, and I think you know Trey. I didn't want the character to feel too close to me because he's just mm. he's not me. <laughs> but Trey loved the idea of this beautiful moment of just this kid who actually is just really really well rounded and really well balanced. And his parents have done a really great job, and so to kind of see him play piano in this to have something that he really loves, something that's really private and secret, that's that has no pressure mm -hmm. um, other than like the wrestling, um, was important to 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 to, to kind of add to that to the story. So. You know, my musical background did give me an insight into understanding the songs that Trey put in the, um, the, the movie as well, and, mm -hmm. and what what that tells that that story in and of itself. Um, but yeah, well, then Tyler is incredibly disciplined with wrestling, like he has to be. When you talk about your background with music and all the music camps that you went to, it sounds like you were very, very disciplined within that as well, too. Yeah. Were, were there any sort of parallels between the you two? You know, Harrison Sr., my dad, he's a tough man. <laughs> you know, he he really, he studied with the best, though, so I, it makes sense. You know, he studied with Ellis Marsalis, and he grew up with Wynn Marsalis and, and Delphio. I mean, that family's inc incredible. Bramford and Ooh. Irvin Mayfield. You know, these are the cats he was growing up with and, and the mentality he had, so he was like, if you want to be, if you want to be a musician, you're going to be the best musician, okay. or don't do it at all. So it was. I would go to school from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then I would go to a jazz school at Noka from you know 4 to 6, and then it would go home and you need to do your long tones for you know you know a couple hours, then do homework, repeat. Saturdays practice for three hours, Sundays get ready for the you know Sunday service. You got to play in the church. My mom was a choir director. That wasn't beautiful, but you know <laughs> the tension there, <laughs> Charlita. Um, and then you know we're going to jazz camp every summer. So it, I did feel this like this expectation of me to, to thrive and to, mm. to, to live up to the legacy that he had created and also make him proud in a lot of ways. But a, a, a young man got to find his way. <laughs> and I found mine in a different art. So <laughs> well, Kelvin, yeah, it clearly seems like you found your way and you're, you're making a way for yourself yeah. and for many others. So well done on that. Man. Thank you. Um, so look, clearly you've had a very packed year. Uh, you've been making a lot of films. Talk to me a bit about what are you watching right now? What's on film or TV that you're watching or that you can't wait to come out? Um, I just finished The Handmaid's Tales. That was dark. Oh, very dark. Good, though. <laughs> Entertaining. Elizabeth Moss, a beast. A beast. Like a chameleon. Just oh, my God. And doubt. Come on. It's great. But um, I can't wait to see Queen and Slim. I've been hearing so many great things about that. Um... Uh, what else? I just started Fleabag. Mm. That's really good. Um, we were talking about Barry. I, I just watched episode one. That's triggering. <laughs> I was like, "Come for me, Barry." Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, those are. I'm just. I'm excited. There's so much good film out right now. The Irishman. Mm. I can't wait mm. to see that. Scorsese is a monster. So let's do this. I want to go back a little bit because the, the names that you're listing are fantastic ones. But I want to know like exactly why you want to see them. So, for example, um, Barry. What, what, are, what are you enjoying about Barry? I just, it really does kind of, I mean, I was like, is this what it's like to be an actor? I think the show really kind of, I, I, I remember when I first came here 
and going into like an acting class and just seeing what the conversations that are happening yeah. and you know just the dynamics and like the fears and the anxieties and also the ego that's involved and who we think we are versus who we actually are and i was like whoa it's like a, like once again those things that kind of mirror your life in a little a little bit and kind of yeah. check you at the door i kind of like it um so that 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 show is it's just and it's funny and it, and it doesn't take itself too seriously so it's 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 I, I like the show i like the show now what about queen and slim yeah i'm i'm really excited to see queen and slim i've heard so many great things about that movie and you know this debut performance from you know, jody turner smith jody turner smith and daniel kaluuya who i know he's also playing fred hampton and you know in, in the movie so i can't wait to see his um his uh, depiction of the character and just that that uh, everything that 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 the movie is Lena Waithe is incredible and she's such an icon and she's such an ally and activist and I'm just I love what she's doing and she's taking those risks and um, it's just such an innovative like storyline what I've heard and but it's also very like current and you know touching on a lot of what things that's going on right now so I'm I'm ex I'm excited I'm excited <laughs> I'm excited to see the action I mean Scorsese De Niro Al Pacino I mean Joe Pesci there you go. Simple. <laughs> uh, it's an acting class and a filmmaking a filmmaking class, right. and I'll take that master class any day. So it's I mean I'm, it's gonna be it's gonna be epic. I've not seen a trailer or anything like that. I don't really like to watch the trailers for the movies though, all the time though, because I like to kind of go in blind. Mm. I think it makes the experience so much more fun. And then I watch the trailer afterwards and kind of go sick. Great trailer. <laughs> well. I also am looking forward to all those ones that you said, especially Queen and Slim. Um, but thank you so much for spending some time with us here today, Kelvin. Like, your movie is amazing, but you're even cooler in real life. So <laughs> we appreciate your time. This has been a great time. Right Thanks. Here.